Today on BladeHQ.com, we are taking a look at the Rock Creek Knives Tortugas, which in Spanish actually means turtle. And this one, I mean, if you look at it, kind of has a turtle-ish look to it. This uh, leaf-shaped blade is much larger than that handle. I don't know why that would look like a turtle, but for some reason, I don't know, just kind of the curves there make it look like a turtle to me. Anyway, we're getting over the specs on this one. This one, uh, when I was looking for knives to compare it to, the uh, Lum Chinese by Spyderco kind of caught my eye as far as just like blade shape and just overall shape on it. So I pulled that one out. We'll compare it to that one near the end of this overview. But uh, let's hit up the specs on this one and we'll get right to it. So first of all, the overall length on this one is seven and a quarter inches. The blade length is exactly three inches made from HWS 2K steel. And I forgot to do my homework on that steel. I don't know a ton about it. But uh, what I do know is that these knives are made by uh, Cass Hanway, which uh, is a samurai sword maker out of uh, Danway, China. Nope, let me get the name right. Dalian, China, excuse me. Anyway, they uh, started back in the late 80s, early 90s, and uh, they make samurai swords. And they're kind of, they are Chinese made, but from everything I, I did research on, it seems to me that this is the kind of company that basically started in China with their swords and just kind of transitioned over to knives. And so they started the Rock Creek, Rock Creek Knives line. And uh, they're not just ripping off other people's designs and throwing them together. They're actually artisans making their stuff in China. They just happen to be from China. So I thought that was kind of interesting to learn a little bit of their history. As well, they had troubles getting, I guess, pure steels, pure high alloy steels. So what they do is they melt their own steel um, to get their own clean steels in China. So kind of interesting. I, it made me just reading their history kind of respect uh, who they are and what they do a little bit more. So kind of a little backstory on this particular knife. While we're talking about the blade, let's get some thickness measurements going on here. Blade thickness on the spine is 0.114 of an inch. Then on the blade side, it is 0.031. While we're doing comparisons, let's uh, take a look at the grind on it. I suspect it's going to be right around 15 degrees or less. Right at 15 degrees. A lot of guys have asked where we got this. Uh, we don't sell them. We tried to but it was going to be a huge hassle. So uh, I just recommend getting it on Amazon if you're interested in the Richard Kell angle device. I don't know what they call it. Angle Delio. Fairly cheap on Amazon. Not that I want to advertise for Amazon. Let's get back to the knife and talk about Blade HQ. All right. So the uh, weight on this knife is 3.6 ounces. It does seem a little heavy for its size, but it seems very solid. It is a back lock, as you can see there. It's got that thumb stud. Right-handed thumb stud, by the way. So if you're a lefty, this one probably isn't for you. Now, one thing I noticed when I picked it up is the lockup on it is very solid. I mean, a lot of these Chinese knives, I pick them up and it's like, whoa, that, that is not a good knife. This one, you can even hear it. Listen to this. This feels very solid in that lockup when it locks up. Now, forward to, forward to back blade play. Next to nothing. And by the way, this is a $30 knife, so... Keep that in mind. Side to side, there's a little bit of flex. You got that back lock there. Now the scales on it, kind of cool. This is a stabilized brown leather. It almost looks like a, a G10, but when you get right down in the details there, get that to focus for you, you can see that is a leather, which I thought was kind of cool. I, I, I've been uh, doing knives now for almost two years and I've never seen that before. I thought that was really interesting. I'm no, I'm no expert on knives by any means, but uh, I do see quite a few, and I thought that was a little bit unique. So here's a little lanyard loop here on the end of the knife, and currently it doesn't move at all. So if you wanted to reposition that or remove it, it's got a little uh, Torx screw there, a little Torx star screw, so you could pull that off. Uh, closed length on it is 4.6 inches. And the handle thickness is just under half an inch. I'll show you that on my calipers. 4.9 inches on the thickness on this one. No pocket clip, so you get what you get there. And I think that's about it. Let's take a quick look at this one right up against the, let me get my cheat sheets here. 
the uh, Bob Lum Chinese. Now, we're talking about a $30, knife, $30 knife versus a $138 knife. What, what's the difference? VG10 steel. I don't, I don't know much about this steel, but I can guarantee at $30, bucks, it's not going to be the most high-grade steel. You're getting VG10. You're getting this uh, carbon fiber scale on there. Very pretty carbon fiber scale, by the way. You're getting Bob Lum design. You get the spidey hole. This one is a liner lock. Um, what's the difference? I mean, I think a lot of that is design. Um, just feeling the, the pivot between the two of them. This pivot isn't bad by any means, but it is a little bit tight. And uh, even, I'm not sure if you can even adjust the pivot on this one. Looking at this, these uh, leather scales, you probably have to take those off and then, I don't know what's under there. You get what you get, right? $30 knife. On the other hand, this uh, Bob Lum, you've got your pivot adjustment right there. No big deal, right? So, I don't know. I think there's something to be said about high quality, super high quality, as in a $138 knife. One of our guys, uh, actually our store manager carries this one, so that should tell you something about the uh, Bob Lum Chinese. But at the same time, $138 bucks versus $30, bucks, $29.95 on Blade HQ. Um, I mean, it's all about what you're looking for and what you're gonna use it for. I think this would be a great knife for, I mean, a kid. If uh, you're looking for something for a young dude, this would be a great knife and I'm sure they'd be super pleased about it. By the way, let's do a quick check here. Coming from the factory, not hair shaving sharp. Coming from the factory on the Bob Lum. I haven't checked this beforehand, so you guys are getting hair shaving sharp. So, just a difference, I mean, versus $130 versus $30. So, you kind of get an idea of this particular blade. Um, let me show you one other thing. I wasn't going to do this, but let me show you one other design by Rock Creek. Let me pull this one out real quick. Uh, just basically different blade shape on this one, kind of a different handle shape. Show you them side by side. And I forget the name on this one, just search up Rock Creek on our website, you'll see it. But uh, just different blades, different styles. But for being Chinese, um, originating in China, um, I don't know, this is a great knife. I, I was pleasantly surprised after, because I, I typically do my research and go pull out the knife and uh, check my research and kind of get my own impressions. but. After doing the research, it was like, okay, this is another Chinese knife, but uh, I'm actually very impressed with the quality of this particular blade and uh, not afraid to say it. So blade centering, by the way, check that out. Spot on, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, very impressed with this particular knife for what it is and what you pay for it. So. Like I said, this is the Rock Creek Tortuga lockback folder, and the place to buy it is bladehq.com. Buy it now.